there's been a few recent studies that challenge the idea of how much collagen you actually need. In this video, I'm going to go through those studies. So make sure you click a like and subscribe to get more updates about the newest studies that can help you make better decisions in regard to your health and longevity. We have a new 2023 study that found that ingesting 30 grams of hydrolyzed collagen with 50 milligrams of vitamin C one hour before resistance exercise resulted in significantly greater concentrations of pro-collagen, whereas there was no difference between ingesting 15 or 0 grams of hydrolyzed collagen. This means that to get the required response for collagen synthesis in the tendon specifically, you might need to consume up to 30 grams of collagen. I know that sounds quite a lot, but this is what the evidence suggests. It's also actually not a very large amount, objectively speaking, when you're taking something like whey protein or some other protein powders, then the serving size is usually 30 grams. So why should collagen protein be any different? 30 grams of collagen is a lot because usually for skin health, they say that you need only like 10 grams of collagen. This brings me to another recent controversial study that showed how collagen supplementation might not be actually that beneficial for your tendons. Or is it? They found that collagen protein supplementation after resistance training didn't increase rates of muscle protein synthesis, whereas whey protein did. That makes perfect sense because collagen protein powder doesn't have all the nine essential amino acids that are needed for triggering protein synthesis, whereas whey protein does. The study showed that whey protein ingestion resulted in significantly greater rise in plasma leucine and other essential amino acids than collagen. However, collagen protein ingestion resulted in significantly greater concentration of glycine and proline, the collagenous amino acids that are necessary for collagen synthesis. These are the amino acids you need for stimulating collagen synthesis that will help with skin wrinkles, bone density and joint integrity. However, the study in question also found that the muscle connective tissue protein synthesis was the same between whey protein and collagen protein. Now, there are some differences between muscle protein synthesis and collagen synthesis. Yes, for protein synthesis, you need all the essential amino acids that collagen doesn't have. But this study doesn't say that collagen protein isn't going to be beneficial for connective tissue. The study just found that 30 grams of whey protein and 30 grams of collagen protein results in a similar muscle protein synthesis response in the tendons. It doesn't make collagen useless, it just makes it somewhat redundant. If you're already taking 30 grams of whey protein, then apparently you don't need to take additional collagen, especially you don't need to take additional 30 grams of collagen for stimulating the connective tissue protein synthesis. But if you're not taking whey protein or any other protein powder, then you would benefit from taking the 30 grams of collagen protein. There's actually another 2023 literature review that found that collagen supplementation increases bone strength, density and mass. It also improves joint stiffness, mobility and functionality while reducing pain. We already know that collagen isn't traditionally used to try to build muscle. Because like we already found, whey protein is way superior for protein synthesis in the muscles. However, there's something collagen protein exceeds whey protein and other protein powders in, and that's skin health and wrinkles. There are many human trials showing that collagen peptides improve skin health and reverse signs of skin aging. A 2023 meta-analysis of 26 randomized controlled trials showed that hydrolyzed collagen peptides significantly improve skin hydration and elasticity. That's the real reason why you would want to take some collagen peptides. Your skin collagen content starts decreasing in your 20s already at a rate of about 10% per decade. By the age of 70, you could have lost up to 50% of your skin collagen content. But would you gain those same benefits by just taking some other protein powder like whey protein, pea protein or soy protein? No, and here's a study that shows that. A 2020 study saw that giving burned patients 36 grams of hydrolyzed collagen protein resulted in significantly greater rates of wound healing than 35 grams of soy protein. So, collagen protein powder results in significantly better skin healing than other protein powders. There's no other study that I'm aware of that would show the how whey protein or some other protein powder would reverse the hallmarks of skin aging. But we have plenty of those studies when we're talking about collagen protein. You could play the devil's advocate and say that soy protein isn't going to help with wound healing because it's not a complete protein. But in the context of skin healing, it's irrelevant because collagen is also not a complete protein. It only has three main amino acids, glycine, hydroxyproline and proline, which are the amino acids needed for collagen synthesis. You do get those amino acids in whey protein and soy protein as well, but in very small amounts. You don't need to trigger protein synthesis in the skin. You need collagen synthesis. And for that, you need larger amounts of collagenous amino acids that you get from collagen. 
The dosages of collagen peptides in the clinical trials involving skin anti-aging are significantly smaller than those in the tendon collagen synthesis. They range from as low as 2.5 grams to 12 grams from marine as well as bovine sources. Thus, it appears you need significantly less collagen for skin health than you do for tendons. For optimal collagen turnover, it's been found that you need at least 12 grams of glycine per day. However, your body needs 3 additional grams of glycine for other vital processes inside the body, such as glutathione synthesis, heme synthesis, creatine synthesis, and bile salt synthesis. That increases the minimum glycine demand to 15 grams per day. So, in the absence of any dietary glycine, you'd be at a 12 gram deficit for collagen turnover. Collagen is 30% glycine, so 10 grams of collagen peptides give you 3 grams of glycine. So if you are taking a collagen protein, which I am recommending, then you would probably want to aim for around 10 grams of collagen a day. It's going to help you reach the optimal intake of glycine per day, which is around 12 grams. The brand of collagen I'm using, Nordcode, actually has an extra 5 grams of added glycine. So I'm getting 8 grams of glycine per scoop. You can get the Nordcode Complete Collagen from livehealthy.com forward slash Nordcode and use the code SEAM10 for a 10% discount. In conclusion, collagen protein isn't useless. There's plenty of studies that collagen does improve joint health, joint integrity, and skin health. It's just that it might be somewhat redundant for tendon purposes if you're already taking some other protein powder like whey protein. But it's certainly not redundant when we're talking about skin health and wrinkles. There's no studies showing how whey protein could reverse the hallmarks of skin aging, where there's dozens of these studies for collagen protein. Overall, it does appear that for tendons and joints, collagen isn't superior to other protein powders, but collagen is still superior to other protein powders in terms of skin health and wrinkles. That's it for this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.